Radiation. We've talked about convection. We've talked about conduction. Convection occurs in liquids and, and gases when they, when they move and transfer heat through the bulk motion of the fluid. Con conduction is the transfer of heat due to the random thermal motion of, of a hotter portion transferring some of that energy molecule by molecule to, uh, along the, and it's, it's much slower, it can be slower. Uh, a third is r radiation, transfer of heat by radiation, extremely fast. Let me tell you why. Radiation is the process by which energy is transferred by means of electromagnetic waves. We will, in, I think it's chapter 22 or 24 thereabouts, next semester, we will talk about electromagnetic waves. They travel at the speed of light. All electromagnetic waves do. Light, infrared radiation, which is heat, ultraviolet, etc. Radio waves, all of those travel at the speed of light. The only difference between them is their wavelengths. How do they transfer energy? Well, you know that you can get warm in the sun. <laughs> you go out into the sun and the sun hits your face and you feel immediately warmer. How does that happen? Those waves contain energy. And when your body intercepts some of those uh, waves, you can, you can absorb that energy and get, uh, get warmed up. So radiation is the process by which energy is transferred by means of electromagnetic waves. Um, from the sun, you've got visible light, you've got infrared radiation and ultraviolet, which gives you sunburns. Um, infrared radiation, which is the one that, it, that mostly warms your skin, but visible light can also. And all of those travel at the speed of light. Define a black body. Black body is a material that absorbs all radiation. That's the defining characteristic of what we call a black body. Um, and you might already know that a, a flat black surface will m absorb most light and reflect very little. So that's a first approximation to what we call a black body. If it absorbs all the energy uh, that is incident upon it, a material that is a good absorber is also a good emitter. So this is an interesting thing. We're not talking about reflection here. So I'm not talking about um, <coughs> a silver-coated block, something that's highly reflective like a mirror. Um, when you shine light on it, the light, a lot of it just reflects back off and is not absorbed very well. Uh, a black, lamp black coated um, block will absorb that energy very well, but then it re-radiates it, not as a reflection like this case, but it radiates energy out. And what's a good example of, of uh, radiation? If you're in a, if, if you're in a tent, um, a small tent especially, that tent is going to warm up. Why? Your body is uh, at a higher temperature than the tent and the surroundings, and your body radiates energy in the form of infrared rays. I'll show you a diagram to, as, as evidence of that. But a good absorber is also a good emitter. So if you've got a like black colored pants or whatever, they absorb well, but they also emit uh, light well. Depends on the temperature. And the wavelength of the emitted radiation depends on the temperature. Okay. So which car will be hottest in the summer? Well, you got the sun up above sending out its rays they bounce off of this white car. They've, they're not absorbed not very well. Whereas they're absorbed by this black car and then re-radiated out into space. But um, ultimately, we were buying a car one time and we were at a dealership and we, at the time we didn't want to have uh, air conditioning in the car. These are the old days. And, um, and the uh, salesperson said, put your hand on this um, black car. It was a hot day. Now put your hand on this white car. Which one do you want to buy with that air conditioning? And the answer was a white car. It was a lot cooler <laughs> um, than the black car because it doesn't absorb. It just reflects all of that radiation. Here's the demonstration of a black body. This is an example of a black body so-called. It's not black. 
it has a white interior. But it serves as a good example of a black body for the following reason. Light that comes through this hole is uh, reflected around inside of the box and has a hard time getting back out before it's reflected several times. So effectively, even though the interior of the box is white, the image that you see through the hole is black. And that's an indication that the light, uh, that all of the light that comes through this hole is actually absorbed by the body itself. Black bodies are important because if once they've absorbed all the light and they don't reflect any, they actually then emit radiation according to the black body spectrum and according to their temperature they have this bell-shaped black body spectrum that they emit out into space. This is at a low enough temperature that the black body spectrum is not visible, but an incandescent bulb, for example, is at a high enough temperature that its black body spectrum is visible to the eye and actually involves some heat and infrared, uh, infrared light as, it, as in heat, as well as ultraviolet light that, that will come from those sources. So this is a demonstration of the black body spectrum. Okay, you want equations, you get equations. The Stefan Boltzmann, Boltzmann Law of Radiation. This law governs how much heat is given off by a body at a certain temperature. And um, this emissivity is a dimensionless number between 0 and 1. It's a ratio of what an object radiates to what the object would radiate if it were a perfect emitter. For a black body, a perfect absorber and a perfect emitter, this emissivity is 1. So if you think about a black body, one that absorbs all energy that comes upon it and then re-emits it, um, then in that case, this emissivity is going to be 1. A highly reflective object like a mirror, like a silver car, a white car, would have a much lower emissivity. All right? Um, that energy radiated in joules, that's this Q. We're always using Q for the energy or the heat radiated. It's proportional to the fourth power of the temperature, amazingly. And um, so if you double the temperature, then you 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. You multiply the energy radiated by 16 by just doubling the temperature. So as you can see, the high, as you get to higher and higher temperatures, objects radiate a lot of energy. That's why stars, which uh, our sun is at a 5,800 degrees Kelvin, it, enter, it radiates uh, about 10 to the 26 watts of energy. That's a lot. Uh, and a watt is a joule per second, so if you take this time, this is the amount of energy radiated for the for amount of time. If you divide both sides by T, then you have a joule per second, which is a watt. Um, the amount of energy radiated is proportional to the area. That might make sense to you. The bigger the area that's at a particular temperature, the more energy it's going to radiate out into space. Makes good sense. Um, and then the only other parameter here is called the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Not a difficult one to remember. 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8. 5, 6, 7, 8. Um, and then whatever the units turn out to be to make this equation work out, the, the units to work out. This has to be in joules. This is, uh, emissivity is unitless, doesn't have any units. Um, temperature is measured in temperature degrees Kelvin. Now this, this temperature for the Stefan Boltzmann law has to be measured in Kelvin. It doesn't work in Fahrenheit or 
uh, Celsius. It has to be measured in Kelvin. And area is measured in square meters, time is measured in seconds. So that makes this unit be what it has to be. Um, that's a Stefan Boltzmann law. So, like I mentioned before, you are radiating energy out into space. You know that because if you get into a confined space, it warms up. Uh, you get into your bed, you're warming up your bed, etc. Um, seen by reflected visible light, that's what we're normally used to seeing. This is seen by emitted infrared light. So, we're shining light on this, on this man and on this bag. And the light that's reflected from the man and the bag is, is what is used to create this image. But that man and that bag are also absorbing light. His emissivity might not be one. His pants are pretty close to one because they're a darker color. But the emissivity is whatever it is. And the, but some of that incident light is absorbed by the man. And then that's re-radiated out into space as infrared light. And that's the image of him by his emitted uh, infrared light. Infrared heaters and heat lamps. So we have one of these in, in my wife's chicken coop. And uh, they emit infrared light. Uh, well, this is an infrared heater. Uh, and this is a heat lamp, transfer energy through electromagnetic waves. So these guys, we had a, in our house in West Virginia, we had one of these infrared heaters that was gas powered. So it was like a, um, a, like a grid with holes in it, a ceramic grid. And the natural gas would come through those holes and, and, and would, would burn, heat up the ceramic grid, and then it, it, be, it glowed. But it was amazing how that thing would throw heat to the other side of the room. And the reason is you didn't have to wait for it to heat the air up next to it and for the air to start convection to get over to the other side of the room. None of that was needed. It transferred heat at the speed of light, the same as the sun does. As soon as you walk out into the sun, you feel its heat. It travels at the speed of light. Same thing here. Um, as soon as you turn it off, if you're even on, if you're on the other side of the room, you can tell that the heat uh, source has disappeared. That doesn't happen with convection. Convection is really slow with forced air convection or natural convection. Same thing with these kinds of heat lamps. Supergiant Betelgeuse, sometimes called Betelgeuse, has a surface temperature of 2,900 K, emits a power of approximately 4 times 10 to the 30 watts. I told you that the sun's power is 4 times 10 to the 26 watts. Well, not, I'm not sure if it's 4, but it's about 10 to the 26 watts. Assuming that Betelgeuse is a perfect emitter and spherical, find its radius. Here's the Stefan Boltzmann law. Here's E, sigma, t to the fourth. This is the area. So that's going to be the surface area of that star is 4 pi r squared times the time. And so here's another example of dividing by the time. We're going to solve for r. We're going to divide both sides by time. Times cancel. And this energy divided by a time is the power in watts. So this guy here, the Q over T, is going to be 4 times 10 to the 30th watts. And then we're going to solve this for R. And if you do the algebra, this is what you get. 3 times 10 to the 11 meters is the radius of that star. It's a big star. It's a red giant star. Thermos bottle. Minimizes heat transfer by conduction, convection, and radiation. So it tries to minimize this heat transfer. Uh, the space between the walls is evacuated. So um, in here, this is a vacuum in here between the two glass surfaces. And those are silvered surfaces to 
minimize uh, energy uh, reflect to, to minimize the emissivity. So if you make that emissivity as low as possible, E, then you're not going to transfer much heat by radiation. So that minimizes the radiation. The fact that it's a vacuum minimizes um, heat losses by conduction by convection. And um, okay. Anyway, pretty pretty interesting. They do a good job. Which one of the following is not an example of convection? An eagle soars on an updraft of wind. Well, convection is fluid motion. Spaghetti is cooked in water. That's got some fluid motion. Smoke rises above a fire. Yeah. A person gets a suntan on a beach. What about that? Suntan is not convection, not conduction. It's radiation. Straight from the sun at the speed of light hitting um, your skin. <laughs>